up? This is Casey with RampantDesignTools.com and welcome back to lesson two of Discovering After Effects. In this lesson, we're gonna learn about layers and effects, which are pretty much 90% of compositing. So if you can kind of get your mind around how both of these things work, you're gonna be in a really good place. First thing I'm gonna do is maybe close this and I'm gonna import a file. And I'm gonna import treeslayers.ai. After Effects, by the way, is really good at working with all sorts of file types. This is just an Illustrator file which has layers in it and it's going to import it and I can choose how to import this. I can either choose to import it as footage, which is basically importing it just like a picture, or I can also choose it to import as a composition. And the good thing about a composition is the layers inside of this AI file are going to be layers in my composition. So I'm going to open this and double click on my trees layers. So here's this Illustrator project I made a couple of days ago. Um, it's a, you know, it's a nice scene with some trees and some shadows and some clouds. But the cool thing is, because this is in layers, I can turn off certain elements. And so the right tree, I can choose to not show or to show. Same thing with the left tree. And so I can go all the way down and just choose my sky and just build this layer for layer. And so, pretty simple concept. If you've used Illustrator or Photoshop before, especially Photoshop, um, it's all about layers. And compositing is all about layers. Without layers, you don't have compositing. Because when you're talking about compositing, you're talking about mixing elements. And so, and so in this composition, we're gonna mix this grass element with this alpha channel on top of the sky. And then we're also gonna put our clouds layer in between the grass and the sky. And so if I were to take my clouds layer and move it down, it would be behind the grass yet in front of the sky. Pretty simple, but if you're not used to layers, um, you might be kind of like, what's the deal with that? And the cool thing about layers is not that you can just move objects, but you can isolate them and, and apply different effects to them. And so if I were wanting to make these clouds bigger, I can scale them up without scaling anything else in the sequence up. I can also do things like blur them. And so I can blur these clouds without blurring anything else in the scene. So this is kind of a nice little example of you know how layers work and we might come back to this in a little bit. Uh, but for now, let's talk about the different types of layers that you have in After Effects. So I'm gonna make a new composition. Those settings are fine, I'm gonna hit okay. And I can right click down in my comp window and I can hit new, and then these are all different layers that I can make. So there's text layers, solid layers, light, camera, null object, shape layer, adjustment layer, and Photoshop file. So the very first thing I'm gonna talk about is solids. So a solid is pretty simple. It's just a solid color that fills up the whole screen. You can also set it to be different sizes, but you should just think of it as making a rectangle of some sort. And so maybe I'm gonna make a dark teal rectangle here, or actually it's deep cyan. So this actually knows colors better than I do. So I'm gonna to listen to that. That's a deep cyan. In fact, I want a super deep cyan. So now it's dark cyan, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. I can also make this a smaller size, or I can even make it square. And so there's my square. And of course I can change it later. And so this is really good for making backgrounds and it's good for, um, basically making anything you want a solid color for. Very good for making mats and uh, masks to rotoscope with, uh, which we'll get into later. But for now, just think of this as a solid rectangle that you can scale and move, and that'll be great for you. Next type of layer I wanna talk about is a text layer. Again, pretty straightforward text layer. I'm gonna say text, you know what, let's be, let's be hip. Since kids these days just uh, basically just take out all the vowels and just leave the consonants and everything. Although sometimes I guess Y is a vowel, but anyway, so that's that's a, that's hip with the cool kids right there, but this is just a text layer. You have your text options over here and paragraph and character. And remember any of these palettes, you can always go up to window and find them if you can't seem to uh, find them over here. Sometimes like right now, it's being weird and I don't know how to find whatever that is. I don't know what that is there. So there's my text layer, again, pretty basic. And I'm gonna go to null object. And a null object is kind of hard to explain. It's, it's basically nothing, 
but you can use it to control other things. For instance, we'll get into parenting a little bit later, but null objects are really good for making handles on things. And so I'm going to parent this text layer to this null, and I can take this null and I can rotate it and it will rotate both the null and the text layer. A null object doesn't render. A lot of people will use a null either to make a handle for another layer or to hold expression controls which we'll get into a little bit later. A null object's really just kind of an invisible placeholder. Now I'm going to make a shape layer and a shape layer is just that. It's a it's a vector shape that you can move around and do different things with. It has a fill and a stroke and you can make a bigger stroke or a smaller stroke. You can also add uh, gradients to it and change your gradient options. And there's a lot of different things you can do with these kind of layers. And these are really good layers for building things or drawing things out of shapes. And so um, one way to make a, a shape layer is just like I did, right click and say new shape layer. But you can also just select no layers and grab your pen and then you can draw your own shape and it just comes through as a shape layer. Then you can change all your options and make it look the way you want to. Next is an adjustment layer. And an adjustment layer is, is pretty cool. It's just an invisible layer that goes over everything else and whatever effects you put on this layer affects the layers under it. And so if I were to go to color correction and go to exposure and bring the exposure down, I'm not really doing anything to the adjustment layer, I'm just affecting the layers below it. And so it's kind of cool because you can affect a bunch of layers at one time and you can just click on and off. Or you can even adjust the opacity of an adjustment layer and it just controls how much this adjustment layer affects the layers below it. And so adjustment layer, really useful. Um, we'll get into some more examples in a little bit. Now here's where this gets confusing. All of these layers are 2D layers. And so you can also make 3D layers, but it's not so much 3D like you're talking about in uh, Maya or Blender. It's more like a 2D layer moved around in 3D space. And so let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to make a new solid and I'll make it, I'm going to make it a magenta red solid one and I'm going to hit okay. Now this is right now is a 2D layer. So this layer's position just has two axes, the x-axis and the y-axis, which is great for a lot of things, but let's say I want this to fly at the camera. There's a couple things I can do. I can scale it up and make it act like it's flying at the camera or away from the camera, but I can also turn this into a 3D layer. And so this little extruded box thing, I can just click that, and all of a sudden this has both an x, a y, and a z-axis. And so I can push this back in the z-axis and what's cool about this is I can even rotate it on the y-axis. And you see my little arrows moving? That shows you kind of how it's pointed. And I can mix any of these up and have it move around in 3D space. So here's a practical example how you'd use a 3D layer. Maybe I want this text layer to say, coming soon. Nope, I want it to say, coming soon. Because we're all civilized people here. You know, we don't, we don't need to prove that we're civilized. In fact, we're so civilized, we even punctuate our spelling mistakes. And so, coming soon. There we go. So now I can take this text layer and I can turn it into a 3D layer. Go whoosh, like that, just like a movie trailer or something like that. So maybe I'll start it back here and then I'll have it go whoosh, just like that. And so I'll keyframe this. start back here it goes boom and then maybe I also want to rotate it and so I'm going to take my x-axis and I'm going to animate that move my keyframe down here actually I'll move it down here and I'll have this rotate at the same time and so now it goes whoosh, like it's flipping up so that's pretty sweet try and do that in 2d um, you'll be working a long time and it won't look as good so um, 3D layers are your friend. What's cool is you can mix 2D layers and 3D layers. And so maybe I have my deep magenta solid here, which I'm gonna just scale up. And so maybe this just comes in and goes boom, like that. Um, this is a 2D layer and this is a 3D layer. Now what's crazy 
Even though this 2D layer is technically at zero on the Z axis, if I take this layer and I put it above my 3D layer, it disappears. So it's kind of weird when you're mixing 2D layers and 3D layers. And so a 2D layer just basically sticks to the camera and a 3D layer can kind of move wherever it wants. Speaking of cameras, let's go to new camera. And this is actually making a 3D camera inside of After Effects that you can move around, you can change zoom, you can change your angle of view, uh, you can enable depth of field. There's a lot of really cool things you can do. And you'll notice that when you click it on that basically nothing happens. But what's cool is you can hit the C key and you can move this camera around. And so it looks like I'm just moving the type, but I'm actually moving the camera. Maybe I'll take this 2D layer and I'll push it back in 3D space. And you can see I'm actually moving my camera in 3D space, but my layers are staying where they are. And so one other thing I want to mention is lights. Lights only affect 3D layers and there's a bunch of different kinds of lights. I usually go with point light um, because it's a little bit easier to understand. But this is just making a light in 3D space that we can move around and it dynamically affects the lighting of our 3D layers. And so I can move this light around and that'll light up my background layer. And so I can bring it forward and maybe I'll turn this into a color that we can actually see this happening on. And it can lighten or darken my front layer. So you can even do stuff like play around with the intensity of the light and you know make it flicker if you want to. You can cast shadows with it and you can just really have fun um, lighting your scenes dynamically with this 3D light. But mixing 2D and 3D layers as well as cameras and lights really gives you a lot of creative freedom. I also want to talk for just a second about layer properties and how to control layers. And so I'm going to make just a new solid and maybe I'll make it cyan. I'm going to make a cyan solid. So this is my layer and I can I can rename my layer just by hitting enter and then I'll call it cyan with the plan because that's a little bit more interesting than cyan solid. So cyan with the plan, sweet. So if I twirl down this layer, I can see my transform controls. Transform controls are common to just about every type of layer. And if I twirl that down, I have some options. One of the major ones you're gonna be using is position. And this is exactly that. It just says, where is this layer on the X axis and the Y axis? There's also scale. Obviously scales the object and rotation rotates and you can also change opacity. And so pretty straightforward controls, but one that's a little bit confusing is the anchor point. And the anchor point is the point on the layer that all the other controls look at to kind of find out how they're gonna act. I can maybe move my position over, but if I move my anchor point over, then I can essentially move the layer back into place. So you kind of have two controls over, you know, where your layer looks like it is. If I move my anchor point up, bring my position down, same deal. But you'll notice that this little crosshair isn't in the middle anymore. And so when I rotate this, it rotates around that crosshair. Let me move this a little bit more so you can see it. So this little crosshair is going to stay in place on the layer. And so same thing with scale. It scales around that anchor point. And so it's really important where that anchor point is. And one quick note, if you take this pan behind tool, you can grab the anchor point and move it around on your canvas. And the cool thing about the transform controls is even if you have everything totally messed up, you can hit reset and it'll just reset and, and be all pretty again for you. And so everything on a layer, much like these transform controls, is kind of on a twirl down menu thing. And so every effect that you apply not only has controls up here, but it also has a twirl down thing under effects in the layer. And so you can twirl down exposure and you have all the same controls you do up here. And so if you're wanting to control something on the layer, you just kind of have to twirl it down and, um, and scroll down and find what you want. And sometimes you can have 20 different things twirled down and it gets kind of confusing, but that's where all your controls for the layer are. There's also some keyboard shortcuts that are pretty important. If you hit P, it'll bring up position, S for scale, 
R for rotation, A for anchor point, and a lot of them you can kind of guess on. Um, e for effects, and although that brought up exposure, it'll bring up all the effects that are on here. So if I had CC vector blur, twirl this up, and I hit E, it'll bring up all of my effects that are on that layer. So if you have a bunch of different layers, you can select them all and hit P, and then you're only dealing with the position, which is good because if you twirl them down, you'd have a hundred things for each layer and it'd get really annoying. So if you just want to worry about position, just hit P. Same thing, effects, same thing, anchor point, same thing, rotation, same thing, scale. I also want to talk for a second on effects. Um, I know I've just kind of blown past them a couple times in this tutorial and the last tutorial, but I want to talk about how you apply effects to a layer and what happens when you do that. And so here's my solid. I'm going to go up to effect controls, right click, and here I have a whole bunch of different effects that I can apply to this layer. And this panel, as I said in the last tutorial, is dependent on which layer you have selected. So if I select a different layer, it changes what's in this panel. And so maybe with Cyan with the Plan 2, let's see, let's make two so this isn't confusing. I don't want this to get crazy. And so I'm going to change this. And to change your solid settings for the record is Command Shift Y on a Mac or Control Shift Y on a PC. And so I'm going to make this maybe red. So I have a red solid and a cyan solid, and I'll just rename this with red for the dead. Awesome. And this is no longer cyan with the plan too. This is cyan with the plan. Okay, don't act like it's not. And so maybe cyan with the plan, I'm going to add a blur to, and I'm going to make it a fast blur. I'm going to take up this blurriness a lot, okay, just so we can see it. And then red for the dead. Maybe I'll add curves too, and I'll make it really dark, maybe really dark red. And so you'll notice when I click on Cyan with the Plan, it goes back to Fast Blur, Red for the Dead goes to Curves, okay? Because that's attached to that layer. So I can apply any kind of effect I want to whatever layer is selected. And so I can either right click and add effects, or I can go up to Effect and add them there. I'm going to go to Fast Blur because I like Fast Blur, it's the best. There's a bunch of different options with any effect, and that's sometimes it's like two different things like this, and sometimes there's about 9,000, and you have to scroll down for seven days, and you have to take a break in the middle of scrolling down because, because there's so many stinking options that you just need a break. You need to eat. It's important that you eat. And so here's my controls. I can take up the blurriness and fast blur, and every effect is different. I can change my blur can change my blur dimensions just to horizontal, just to vertical. And so these are all the common things, it doesn't matter what the effect is, that you can count on. You can, If you select the layer, you can change stuff with the effects in the effects control panel or in the twirl down. So now that you are basically an expert on layers and on effects, we're going to walk through a quick example of how we would use all of these things in a practical sense. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a new comp and I'm going to call it movie title. So we're just going to make a really simple graphic title using 2D and 3D layers. And so the first thing I'm going to do is make a solid because a solid is a good background. And I'm going to pick a color. Oh, let's pick let's pick blue cuz I like blue. I'm going to go with royal blue solid 1. And I'm going to make this comp size with my convenient little button there. I'm going to hit okay. There's my blue background. I'm going to add some flavor to this background. I don't want it just to be this royal blue field here. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it some texture. So I'm going to right click in my project window and hit import file. And I have this really cool mesh texture. And so I'm going to open that and I'm just going to drop it on top of my royal blue solid. When you drop something in your comp, it comes in at its actual size. I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to hit R for rotate and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. So 90, boom. So when I zoom out, we can see that it fills up the whole screen. It's plenty big for our comp, and I might even scale it down a little bit. And so I'm just going to scale it to where it's filling up the comp. That looks good. Now I'm going to go over to the transfer mode, and these are just the transparency modes for each layer. And so I'm going to hit multiply, and multiply is going to take away all of the white pixels and just leave the darker pixels. 
And so I'm going to fit to 100%. And that's kind of a cool looking background. So I'm not finished with this yet. I'm going to make, I want to make kind of a vignette for my comp here. And there's a few different ways to make a vignette. But the way I'm going to choose this time is I'm going to right click and make a new solid. And I'm going to make it probably a white solid. Now I'm going to go to effect controls for the white solid and I'm going to right click and go to generate ramp. And all this does is make a gradient on whatever layer you have it applied to. And so for ramp shape, I'm going to hit radial ramp. And now I can choose all my options for a radial ramp. I can take the starter ramp crosshairs and maybe move it to the middle. And then I'm going to take the end of the ramp and I'm going to move it down a lot. And so moving these controls and moving these are the same thing. It just kind of depends on what's more convenient to move. And so I can move this out quite a bit, but maybe I want to move it a lot more. And so I'm going to drag this out. That looks pretty good, but I want the inside to be white. So I'm going to make that white and I'll make the outside dark. And so now this is brighter in the middle and darker on the outside. Now I'm going to hit this transfer mode and I'm going to make it multiply again. And so what this is doing is making darker edges around my comp. Now I'm going to make a new text layer. And I'm going to call it Smashy. Because this is going to be kind of smashy and I don't want people to be caught off guard. I want them to be very comfortable. So that's why I'm calling it Smashy. I don't need to justify myself to you. So for Smashy, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna right click on Smashy and I'm gonna go to Perspective, Drop Shadow, and that's just gonna add a little drop shadow to my letters here. And you can make it softer, you can make it darker, all the goodies. If you're having trouble seeing the shadow, you can hit shadow only, and that'll just show you the shadow. So that looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna make it probably a little bit softer because I like my shadows to be soft. Looks nice. So I'm gonna make this text layer a 3D layer, and I'm gonna hit P for position, and I'm going to hit my stopwatch to keyframe my animation here. And if you're confused by keyframes, it's okay. Just click this if you're following along. And I'll explain everything about keyframes in just a little bit. I'm going to end with my position there. I'm going to move to my first keyframe. I'm going to hold down shift and drag to the left because you can drag a lot faster when you hold shift. And I'm just going to move this behind the camera. And so this is going to come in and go boom. And these smashy letters are just going to smash into the background which is exactly what I'm looking for, so that's convenient. So that's basically how you would make a graphic title. I also want to go back to this comp with the trees. And because we're dealing with layers, like I said, we can apply effects to different layers. And so maybe I want to make these shadows a little bit darker. I can take these shadows and I can select them and hit Command D for duplicate and do that a couple times. And so now I have a little bit darker shadows without darkening anything else in the picture. Maybe I want to make this sky a gradient instead of just a regular sky. So I'm going to right click and go to generate ramp and I'll make the beginning of the ramp a little bit pink and the other side of the ramp blue and we have a little bit more of an interesting sky there. So I hope that gives you a good general idea of how layers and effects work in After Effects and how they can be used for compositing. So if you can wrap your mind around how this works, I think you're in a really good place to dig deeper into After Effects. So make sure to check out Lesson 3 of Discovering After Effects, where we learn a little bit more about animation using keyframes, as well as time remapping of our footage. So once again, my name is Casey Ferris with RampantDesignTools.com. I'll catch you next time.